first, Tamara. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the video that was posted was about uh, some sitting duck policy. Now I'm not familiar with mm-hmm. with that particular policy. Actually, I'm not familiar with with any type of policies unless they if I didn't read about it or it's just thrown mm-hmm. in my face. Now, I did not know about uh, a sitting duck policy. I, 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 I didn't understand what it was uh, until a lot of people came in the comments and they started, you know, telling me about what, what it is. It, and it sounds like it's a, a actual policy. Like some companies like Landstar, for example, don't want you pulling over you know, for whatever reason. I mean, I I mean, if I got like in this particular case, the young man had to use the bathroom. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, us veteran drivers, us guys. I mean, you know, I I, I know how to use mm-hmm. the bathroom and drive at the same time. I'm just saying. But sure, some, you're a professional. Some, mm-hmm. some guys, <laughs> you know, need need to get out and relieve themselves. And the only way to do it is to pull over to the side, maybe an off ramp, because, you know, nine times out of 10, we're not supposed to pull over to the shoulder unless it's an emergency. But relieving yourself could be an emergency, you know, medicine or whatever the case. But in this particular case, they, they, they don't want you to pull over to the side at all. What's, what's, what, what, do you, what do you have to say about the sitting duck policy. Okay. Well, first of all, I have been, and, and I've been transparent with you in the past. I have been leased on the Landstar since 17, but I have definitely um, taken a break just due to some other things I had going on with the truck. But I'm going to tell you something about Landstar coming in the door. That policy is made understood, if I'm not mistaken, the very first day of orientation. Mm. And not to necessarily plug anybody else, but I am going to just tell you where you can go and get the more a better reference about it is um, Blue Ribbon Logistics. They are mm. also on YouTube and they put out something every week, but you can go back to, to episode blah, 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 blah. But they break it down about the sit and duck policy. Um, last week I saw in the land star group where they had to break the sitting duck policy down again. Mm. Again, I don't necessarily have the year and the history of it, but a long, long, long time ago, before you and I ever decided to drive a truck, there was a very, very bad accident. A very bad accident. And it cost them some money. Okay. And from that point on, no more sitting on the side of the road unless it's an emergency or a breakdown. That that has been their policy for uh, from day one with me, right. and I'll take it away. F- oh, go on. All right. So break down what type mm-hmm. of emergency that we can. Pull I mean, over for. you can. I mean, you could be having a personal emergency, but the thing about it is, is that unfortunately because of how things happen and because of how people in cars who are not paying attention nowadays, how they can just run into the back of you. You know, if it's a personal emergency, I know if you're sick or God forbid you're, you're having a damn heart attack, that can't be proven until somebody show up to your uh, rescue. If you're going to be rescued, if you would, but as far as breakdowns and stuff, you know you got to break down a tire. Something is going on with the motor. You got to pull over. One of the first things they ask you to do is call safety. Number one, get out there and put your triangles out because that saves you. So, for instance, if somebody runs in the back of your trailer, 
and your uh, triangles aren't out, when these lawyers come after your ass and they see that you didn't um, have your triangles out, that's why these companies end up paying so much damn money because you don't have your safety devices out. Mm. So for them, for small things such as relieving yourself and stuff like that, you need to try to make it somewhere where you will be no longer as much a, a threat to the public as you will be sitting on the side of the road. So if you pull into a fuel island for all the cry babies who cry about the fuel island, if you pull into the fuel island or just pull in into a Walmart or somewhere big, a big lot, okay, you're good then. But just sitting on the side of the road, again, that's something that is understood. And they... They don't make any provisions for you at all. And I mean, to the point of uh, last year, I and I do quite a few of these type of loads, but I'm just giving you an example of this place because I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to go in there. But the time, but uh, because of the time of my appointment, I had to be there very early in the morning. So I do a lot of construction sites. Uh, I always bring in a lot of cabinets and doors and stuff like that into construction sites. So, you know, some construction sites, especially with a van, you just can't go in there. So because I was going to be sitting on the side of the road, you're talking about five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. And at this time, it was still dark outside at that time. Yes, I called safety, let them know. And the first thing they said, and yeah, it sounds it sounds crazy. And it does. But it's saving your ass. Put that triangle, put those triangles out, and put your four ways on. And and hey, again, if somebody came up behind me, wasn't paying any, any underneath my trailer, my safety devices were out, and my warning signals were on. Okay. So that covered me in that instance. So okay. that's why it's like that. But I'm going to take you back again just well, a little bit because I know well, I've been driving a little bit well, longer than well, you. Hold up, hold, hold, up, hold up before you take me back a little bit in the time. So, so okay. of course, this sitting duck policy with Landstar has been around <laughs> since the dawn of time. And you 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 yeah. pretty much saying that the driver uh, that pulled over, and from what I understand from the from the video, he he was on the mm -hmm. ramp. He was on the on ramp or off mm -hmm. ramp. So that's oh. still considered mm -hmm. that that's still that's considered sitting too? dark. That's sitting dark. Coming wow. up a ramp and somebody run up up underneath your truck. Think of the times that you even yourself getting off the. Think about those ramps that are sometimes double, double ramps. You can go back to the left or to the right or just keep going forward. Think about some of the times because of how you have to position yourself to usually, because the left turn is usually not a problem, but when you have to make that right-hand turn. Think about how some people, you looking at them in your left mirror like, damn, are you not paying any attention because they're getting so close to your trailer. So, yes, you got to think about that, and that's what I was just getting ready to say. I remember when I was going to truck driving school in 2000, and that was something they told us about a story about a J.B. Hunt driver that was sitting on a ramp doing his law book. It was foggy, a 17-year-old boy, and he had. they said a J.B. Hunt driver had his four ways on. But he, um, a 17-year-old boy came up the ramp, evidently didn't see the truck, but they said he was drunk as well, but that still didn't have anything to do with it because he couldn't see you. He ran up under his truck and decapitated him. Don't know if the guy's still in jail, but he went to jail for that. What? Oh, okay. For He went to jail for that. Mm. Yeah. But even though it was the kid's fault. Yeah. And although it was the kid's fault, what, what did they tell you? You are the professional driver. So you are responsible for everybody, and that's what everybody don't understand. You know, I don't know if they're not telling you that anymore, and that's why so many people are getting in trouble because you think, oh, I'm a truck driver. I can do whatever I want to do. Bullshit. No, you can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You are you're, responsible you're for right. the people out here on you're, this road. You're right. They're not being yeah. told that. They're not being told that because yeah. a lot of a, a lot of the things, a, a lot of the things that some of these truck drivers do, especially these new TikTok truck drivers do, nobody ain't, mm -hmm. no, no, nobody ain't mm -hmm. telling them that, you know, nobody ain't telling mm -hmm. them, that nobody ain't telling them nothing, man. So okay, yeah, so, so so sitting mm -hmm. up policy is uh is a thing with Landstar, and they let you know like a day one, day one, I mean, day one. Day one. Day. Wow.
And like I said, if you want more context on it, go back through Blue Ribbon Logistics. They are on YouTube. They they are uh, Landstar Carrier. They are exclusively Landstar, and they can break down everything for you. They will tell you. They give you the context on when things happen. There was a Landstar driver not too long ago who lives in Vegas. Thought he could do the same thing because just like up in places like New Jersey and stuff, they park out their truck and trailer on the side of the road. Right. Negative. And somebody did run up under his truck. Now, what about now? Is that is that same goals for um, rest uh, rest areas? Because you know how you you know how rest areas get like Trump tight. And you have to be on the start- inside. Oh, yes, you man. have to be on the inside curve. So mm. if you're coming into the rest area, and I know this because I'm the rest area queen a whole lot. I'm not going to lie about that. No, so the rest when you come too. into the rest area, yeah, absolutely. So when you come into the rest area, you have to be in the rest area, not sitting on the ramp coming into the rest area. You have to be in the rest area. And if you, and if it's room on the opposite side, as you're going out, you still need to be in the rest area, not on the ramp as say, for instance, a car can just, now a car can roll up a hill and hit you. You know, any, any kind of freak accident can help, uh, can happen. Excuse me. But you have to be on the inside of it. So, yes. Mm. And again, that's covering everybody's ass. And I'm, and I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. The, the day of making excuses for ignorance is all over. This is still not a, a profession that you can just be so careless and say, well, I'm a truck driver. I can do what I want to do. No, you got to worry about it, everybody else. And, and my thing is with the off ramps and shit, how are you comfortable going to bed? <laughs> Let's go there. How are you comfortable going to bed on the freaking ramp when cars are zooming past you? Well, let me, let me, I don't, I don't, let, let, me, I don't. let me, let me, let me put it out. Let me go ahead and throw it out there. You know, Tamara here. Mm-hmm. Come on. She is from Georgia, <laughs> the great state of Georgia, <laughs> the home of no parking anywhere in Georgia. So that's why, hey. you know, I'm probably going to have to probably put that down right there because, you know, Parking well, is, is, and is then put my scarce. years of experience out there as well. It is, and put my years of experience out there as well. Go so ahead. I come from knowing how to read a map, knowing how to trip plan, knowing and having a and having a A B C D E F G sometimes plan. Mm. No, I'm not perfect. Yes, mm. there are moments that I will run over my hours, but I know because of how long I've been doing this that there is somewhere for me to park. Not a ramp and not Walmart, but I'm gonna find some other park. There is a mom and pop that y'all might not want to go in. That you might even have to pay damn ten dollars to park. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. I got and you. here at home, yes. I've been paying for parking here at home because there's no park. It's no parking here. And it hasn't been for years, but now more than everything. So just like I pay my, my bills monthly, I pay for a parking spot at home monthly. That ensures that I'm going to have somewhere to park every time I come home. Okay. Every single time. Okay. So, that's, what's that's, up. Me. That's, that's what's up. All right. Because, you know, I just got that's finished. Talking, I, I just got finished talking, uh ticket. I just got finished talking to a uh, TikTok trucker. Her name is uh, Tam Zier. Shout out mm-hmm. to Tam Zier. Uh, unfortunately, she ran out of hours and she ran out of her conveyance hours. And she was, you know, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say forced, but it, I, I'm going to say unfortunately. Unfortunately, she ended up on the 285. And um, <laughs> yeah, she she had a she she had a whole bunch of backlash in that video. I'm I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm sure she did. But well, let me ask you a question, Lashawn. And again, because this is me. Like I said, I'm I'm no longer from 2022 and beyond. I'm no longer making any excuses. So whatever. But how do you run out of your convenience? Why are you using your conveyance so much that you're running out of your conveyance? Well, the, well, the company that she's with is only allowed, 
I think she said like maybe about 30 minutes to maybe like 45 minutes. I'm not sure. But personal conveyance is 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 it varies between companies. I know when I was with U.S. Oh, Express, I, oh, I, I know that. I know yeah. when I was with U.S. Express, they didn't have none. When I was with J.N.R. Shrugel, mm-hmm. they didn't have none. Uh, when I was with mm-hmm. Rooster, I, I had personal conveyance. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. When I was with the Black Ops Company, I definitely had personal conveyance. And the company that I'm mm-hmm. with now, is they, their personal conveyance is uh, an hour. That's about it. So basically, I understand. basically we, we you, have. Can, you can run personal convenience for as as much as you want, but it's still, you know, like I said, the company reserve the amount of, I mean, the allotted hour, I mean, the allotted time for you to use personal convenience. And my company in particular, you take too much advantage of that. They'll take it away from you. Oh, okay, so I let you, well, I ain't let you, but I listened to you explaining it, and of course oh, you, you know, you, you knew and I know, but my sarcasm, you didn't know my sarcasm, because my whole thing is, is this, you have, you have 14 hours to work, you have 11 hours to, to drive. What are you doing that whole entire 11? I know 14 catches up to that 11, but what are you doing so much then you got to move over to your PC? I understand. Well, let me tell but you. I'm, but I'm not understanding that, that, again, that you're not properly trip planning. You're not doing what you need to do right. And, yes, when you're down here in the southern states, when you're on the east coast, yes, your hours are crazy. I get that because of the traffic and just the construction, everything that's going on, you know, blah, 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 blah. But... Tamara. PC to me. <laughs> Tamara. I mean, any, yeah. anything liable to happen. Let me, I mean, you know, I I can give you a whole bunch of scenarios, especially with my company. I know. My company, my, my company, I know. My company made the HOS a policy now. Like, literally, if mm-hmm. we have hours on our clock, brother man want mm-hmm. us to run out them hours no matter what. Like, of course he does. He of want, course he, he does. Us to run yeah. out those hours. So sometimes trip planning can go out the window at times. Like let's say for example, I I have like I have like <clears throat> two. Let's say I have two hours left. Right. Normally, mm-hmm. before I got here, normally I would take about an hour and a half to look for some parking. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I would take that whole hour and a mm-hmm. half. And I would look for some parking. Mm-hmm. No. Now mm-hmm. that I'm here, brother man wants me to run that mm-hmm. entire clock out and then look for some okay, parking. And, 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 but and, I'm, I'm just saying, you and, know, okay, and, and, I still I still and, look for parking within that hour, though. Okay. And again, and in that situation, but again, what did I say earlier? It's a, it's, it's your responsibility. You, you let me tell you right, something. Right, when they right. stop you, they don't care nothing about who you work for. They don't care nothing about who billboard trailer you pulling. They don't care anything. It is about LaShawn. It's about the young lady that you just mentioned. It's about me. They could care less about what the company want me do, you know, on top of what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's why I said what I said. And I was about to give you a case in point. It's like case in point. It's 353 here. Oh, oh horrible time, especially being a Friday to get ready to leave Atlanta to do anything. So say for instance, oh, sure. hmm, I have to go and deliver in maybe Richmond, Virginia tomorrow or something. Okay. So for Richmond to hear common sense going to be, I'm going to run, run 20 out to 285, 285 back around the 20 and I'm going to run back up 20 and I'm going to run up 95 somewhere. Well, the thing about it is, is that once I, once I, once I make it out of Atlanta successfully and I get over on the other side of Augusta, 
coming into, um, excuse me, not Augusta, but coming into Columbia, South Carolina, I thought, I need to start making some decisions. So once you get up into Florence, South Carolina, you got several truck stops up in there, right, and you right. got some truck stops. I mean, not, excuse me, not truck stops, but um, rest areas. Rest area. You need to start making some decisions and not just running it out to your very last minute, and that's right. why when we go on down the road, 8, 9 o'clock, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you see 15 freaking trucks on the damn road. And it's like, y'all, what the hell are y'all doing? So that's running your hours down to the bone. And look, I understand that some of you all work and are leased on to some very interesting people. And you all got to do what you got to do. But you need to do what you need to do for you. Because, mm-hmm. again, once you stand in front, in front of... Uh, Guilty. Of, Dealing with the DOT, they don't care nothing about the company policy. It's about what you should have been doing. And that's why I say for me, because I don't have nobody calling me saying, well, Tamara, blah, 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 because I do my own thing. But it's just a a common sense thing. And we get two hours of PC. And I'm not going to tell you no lie. I only bother that PC. For instance, if I've come in here and... I'm say I'm 30 minutes from the house and I just delivered a load. I'm bringing my ass home. I do PC for things like that. Those are the things that I PC for, you know, and, and again, that's me because that's how I run my business. And it's because I've been doing things as long as I've been doing things. Uh, I, I found that a lot of things are extremely unnecessary, especially if I put everything in the truck and do what I got to do while I'm still at home, you know? So again, that's me. Mm-hmm. Now let me ask you this: being being the owner, being yeah. you're, you're owner operator, right? How, how long you been? How, how long you been yes, owner sir. operator? Been on operator since 2015. Okay, so I'm I'm curious to know that you you got your own truck, like your own truck. You're yes. you're not leasing a yes, prime sir. truck. This is no, your sir. truck. Mm-hmm. Right, so I always mm-hmm. I always want to ask owner operators this. I know I I think I asked this in the past, but. I'm not sure if I got like an, a definitive answer, but maybe you can help me out with this. So you're mm-hmm. you're an owner operator, your own truck, right? Your own truck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. How can you guys use your truck if you're not up under a load, if you're not up under a load or anything like that, can you use your truck and how is it used uh if you use it for your personal like say for example i, well, I want to I, I wanna go to not not just your typical walmart but i i use let me rephrase it can i use my truck mm-hmm. as my car when i'm not working uh up on the pc <laughs> now up you, on the pc because after they changed that law after they changed that law, it's no longer, oh, it's my truck. I can do what I want to do. Whenever that that truck is is moving, that's the reason why we got all these different type of ELDs and stuff in the truck now. Because it's 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 got the it's showing the movement of it and everything. So no, you can't just use it as a personal vehicle. Not anymore like you used to. So you, you that was a time that you used to could do it. Now you mentioned mm-hmm. earlier that you say you was only a, you say you was only allowed it two hours. Is that because you? Yeah, we get it? we get two hours a day. But let me ask you this: Is that you allowing mm-hmm. yourself two hours, or is that uh, FMCSA mm-hmm. allowing you two hours? No, that's that's Landstar's. Oh, two hours Land a day. Stars to, but it's your truck. Though. That's Landstar's two hours a day. But, but it's, it's my truck. It does not make a difference. I run up under Landstar's authority. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. So I'm not running up under, if I ran up under my own authority, that I guess that would be different. Now, I can't speak on people with authority because I've never owned an authority. But I run up under Landstar's authority, and that's another thing, too. Everybody got to understand about when you're running up under somebody's authority. So it's almost like this. Your house, your rules, right? So I just can't come in your house and do what I do at my house. Your house, your rules. So that's why with all those companies that you mentioned earlier that who you used to work for, they had this amount of time or they didn't have that of time because those are their house rules. 
So again, Landstar's rules are are uh, two hours a day. Uh, when I was leased on to CDN Logistics out of um, out of Chicago, if I'm not mistaken, hell, I think they had ten hours. But that was a long time ago, and that was around the time when PC and all that stuff came in. But, of course, people started taking advantage of it, and the hours went down significantly. There were people actually running loads on that PC hour. But, I mean, what can you do when you got to, when you explain it to the DOT that, okay, I was out of hours on my 70, but I had these PC hours, so <laughs> why not? Now you, you mentioned, know, so yeah, Landstar allows us ten hours. I mean, excuse me, two, two hours. hours. Now you mentioned that you you you, you mm-hmm. mentioned some interesting things in that in that little in that little segment right there. So, being that you're up under Landstar's authority, even though the truck mm-hmm. even though the truck is yours, you still buy, mm-hmm. you you're still by you still bound by Landstar's policies and procedures. Absolutely. <laughs> Again, I'm running up under their authority. I'm pulling their trailer. We Again, we have to look at it. You aren't anything, and I'm not saying this to put anything down because I absolutely love pulling for Landstar. I don't have uh, any plans to go do anything else, and that's me. That's 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 my decision. But until you run up under your own authority, you can do whatever you want to do up under your own authority. But that's just like with any other situation. They give you enough rope to hang yourself. So they come, you come in, you understand that this is not a company, but more or less a brokerage. But coming into this brokerage and partnering with this brokerage, this is how they run it this these are the rules to run up under my authority i mean if if you had your own truck and i had my truck i mean excuse me if you had your own truck and i had my own authority and you said well hey tamara i want to run up under you how much you're going to charge me i'll tell you how much i'm going to charge you and let you know the things that hey i'm not going for because you got my dot number on the side of that truck Mm -hmm. it's the it's that dot number is the one that's gonna suffer so Mm -hmm. that's why when people talk crap about this and and because of that it's because of all the people who knew what the rules were decided to do what they want to do because this my truck yeah it is your truck it's your truck they 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 never said that you couldn't put this on your truck and do what you want they mm -mm. but it's the it's the rules when you sign that contract and again i'm not in my truck so i don't know how many pages that is but when you sign that contract just like with every other contract, uh, I've learned this myself. And because of mistakes that I've made, thinking I knew what I was doing, you need to always go through that contract and read that contract. And because of how everybody posts every damn thing now, I mean, if you got a problem with something or you don't know whether or not it's the right decision, I would say, hey, see if you can go find a contract and read the contract. Mm. And understand what you're reading because their rules are their rules and and point blank period. So just like a lot of other places, now going, going back to that guy, um, the the driver coming up and and reporting him or whatnot. Before Mm -hmm. you go back to him, because I want to touch on that too. But, um, Mm -hmm. again, uh, the authority, right? The authority mm-hmm. is something, mm-hmm. you know, that a lot of drivers, you know, shoot for. But let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. In order to pull or broker a load, uh, mm-hmm. you have to have an authority and or be leased on to somebody with authority. You can't just I, I can't just call up and say, uh, hey, good year. Uh, you guys got some tires that needs to be transported, I'll transport them for you. Can I can I do it that way? Or do I have to have my authority in order to do that? You have to have your own authority and 
insurance and everything because they're going to ask you for your packet. Your packet is going to be the information on you, your business, your truck, and et cetera. Again, for those who got their authority, I'm sure they can correct me if I said anything wrong. But the one thing I've, I've learned about authorities is this, is how long you've been in business. That's number one. Number two is your insurance. And I've even seen here lately where I think somebody was sending in their packet to a, 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 a big Fortune 500 company, and they wanted to know their um, their inspection record, okay. you know, with the DOT and such. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, these businesses can ask you for all kinds of everything. So, again, when we just go on the loan board, because we're already leased on, nobody's asking those questions, and we're doing business within within house anyway. Right. So we're not dealing with that. But for somebody, yeah, that's doing that, yeah. So, okay. I mean, even when people get their own customers, they still have to give them their insurance and, you know, just all that stuff anyway. Oh. I mean, uh, take it just like somebody getting ready to do um, the Amazon Flex and the, excuse me and all that stuff. What they do? They ask you for your insurance. They ask you for your license, um, and they ask you for a little personal information so they can do a background check on you too. Sometimes, so it just all depends on that situation. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now, mm-hmm. now, of course, in that same video, um, Tamara, mm-hmm. Tamara is still still here in the building with us. Um. The young man was dimed out by another driver, man. Now you pulling for Landstar, maybe you can help me out in that. Is there <laughs> is there a dime out reward? Because the guy, the guy on the video said that uh that he got dimed out for one hundred and fifty dollars. Is that true? It's been rumors of that. But I personally don't know anybody that's ever gotten in anybody's business like that. So it's it's been rumors of that. So I I I don't know. I, but I've heard I haven't heard that much. I've heard of, I've heard it was just fifty dollars. <laughs> I heard I heard that uh, I heard that back in twenty nineteen from somebody that it was just fifty dollars. So $50? I mean I, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna you know, die, I'm and, gonna dime out, out my fellow driver for fifty bucks. Are you serious? Now listen, I, I, hey, I, listen, I again, if you, if, if you if you driving reckless, if you driving reckless, mm-hmm. then yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna have to. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. gonna have to. I'm gonna have to say something that you know you're all over the road for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. and maybe you know I I don't know why you're all over the world or anything like that could be a medical condition could be that you're not i mean could be that you're distracted could be that the wind is blowing you all over the place but that's right. that's cause for concern but mm-hmm. i mean if i'm on the side of the road taking the piss 50 bucks though uh-uh, man. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Again, like I said, I've heard rumors. I don't know. And, I mean, just like I've seen Swift, I've seen J.B. Hunts. I've Anonymous. seen everybody sitting on the sitting on the side of the road. I, I don't know. I am too busy watching the person that's on the side of me, the person in front of me, and the person coming up on, on, on behind me. I'm too busy worrying about my safety and what I got going on. And, and I don't know if that other driver was hopping off and they had a customer or they were getting ready to go do something, or maybe they saw that trailer and some people, they will, they will drive right past you just to look and see what you're doing because there are a lot of people. And I was about to say that there are a lot of people that's been over here for a long time. You know, they, they, um, they're very strong with the safety and they give out these million milers, these two, three, four million milers. There have been people over here that probably been driving as long as you and I've been alive and that's real. Mm. And you know, those people, a lot of those people, I mean, they're, they're very proud of what they do. They're very proud of the company and you know, they, everything is by the letter of the law with them. And 
I, I mean, hey, that's their business. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm 100. <laughs> I'm, I'm, believe me, I'm, I'm 100, uh-huh. especially if you get with a company that's, that's true uh-huh. you. Uh-huh. Especially if you get with a company that's treating you good, yeah, it's it's only it's only it's only fair to you know return the favor, man. But fifty dollars, uh-huh. man, man, yeah. Yes. But yeah, you exactly Again. right, uh, Tamara. You you <laughs> exactly right. That's why I got that's why I got these privacy screens, man. Because they'll roll, they they'll roll like nose to nose with you on the highway. Just looking, just uh-huh. just looking at you to see what you're doing. Like, bro, what are you doing? Like, I see that. I'm. I, I see. I don't see it a lot mm-hmm. now. But when I was like with 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 my other companies, like U.S. Express, mm-hmm. I seen that a lot. They'll they'll come up to you nose to nose and just like, bro, okay, okay, I'm doing 65, my G. I'm sure you're trying to pass me. So go, go. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I, and and again, I, I I come up on a lot of them and they and 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 I see them at the truck stop. People again, you, we, we're grown. <laughs> we are grown, and I am not a nosy person. What you are doing is none of your business. But I have seen people who got the same trailer and. Uh, the same sign on the side of their truck doing some crazy stuff, but that ain't none of my business because I need to only be minding the business that pays me, and, and that's exactly. Tamara. So exactly. I, I'm hey, I'm in a parking spot. As long as I'm in that parking spot and I'm good, that what I see, I'm like, oh, you know, I'll I, again, I see a bunch of crazy stuff, so that's none of my business. I immediately close my curtain around my window immediately. Because, again, it's none of my business. I don't care. Damn, I just got finished nope. passing the none state of my prison, business. man. That's crazy. Over here on US 70 in North Carolina. What prison is this? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Have, have One you, know, you don't want to be in. How have, about have you, that? Have you ever noticed, like, modern prisons in, in certain states is, like, close to the damn highway? Like I mean, if they was able to get, I, the, the, I mean, if they was able to get out, like if they was able to escape or something like that, you know, they got the, they got the. State It'll be highway, easy, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Tamara, thank yeah, because they used to be where they'd be deep in the, in the wood with the uh, with the prison. Crazy, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm good on the prison. Yeah. I'm not trying to not trying to go there for <laughs> no for no sixty days in, ten days in. Uh, uh, with with these social experiments, I'm not trying to do none of that shit. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you can go on in there and do your nah, podcast. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to. No, I, I'm I'm good where I'm at. Watching that stupid shit on TV. Hey, uh, we got a new reality series coming up for you. Yeah, what is it? Hey, we're doing a social experiment about people in jail. No, I'm good, bro. We pay you a million dollars. No, I am good, bro. I am not going to no jail for no fucking million dollars just to see how the fuck they live. I'm I'm all right. I've seen way too many prison movies for that shit. I'm good. I'm good. Tamara gotcha. Smythe. T- well, Tamara. Oh, wrong button. Tamara. Guys, you know the yeah. best conversation starts over here on the Lockout Men Podcast Show. If you guys want to jump on, y'all know what to do. Two one six six zero zero two zero nine zero. And on that note, thank you to Miss Tamara for coming in and and chiming in on the uh, sitting duck policy. Now that I got a a better understanding, I also got a I also got much more information. I learned something today, Tamara. Thank you. No problem. No problem. All right. All right. That's going to do it for us, guys. Here's the y'all.